Speaker, this is a very important motion before the House today, one that should make Canadians very concerned. It's a motion that should never have come before this House. The fact that we as opposition members have been left with no other choice but to bring it forward is as important as the motion itself. The motion is to direct the government to provide the support committees require to carry out their important work. Essentially, to instruct the government to provide documents and political staff witnesses for the conflict of interest and in lobbying in relation to pandemic spending study, and to instruct Zita Astravas, the former Chief of Staff to Minister of National Defence and Director of Issues Management for the Prime Minister and current Chief of Staff to the Minister of Public Safety to appear at the National Defence Committee for their study on addressing sexual misconduct issues in the Canadian Forces. Canadians could be forgiven if after hearing this they said that seems incredibly reasonable. Two House of Commons committees need to hear from critical parliamentary staff to do their work. That makes sense. Why wouldn't they? So hang on. What's really going on? And that is why this is such an important motion. Because this motion is not a root cause, but a symptom of something much bigger. Something that speaks to some of our fundamental assumptions around the system of government and the values we hold dear. The Defence Committee is conducting a study on addressing sexual misconduct issues in our Canadian forces, including serious allegations against General Vance, the highest ranking member of the Canadian Armed Forces, the Chief of the Defence Staff. And at the heart of the matter is that the Defence Minister, his staff, then Zita Astravas, officials in the Privy Council office, officials in the Prime Minister's office, and possibly the Prime Minister himself, knew of these serious allegations in March 2018 and took no action for three years. No investigation was carried out. General Vance was not suspended. Worse still, in May 2019, the Prime Minister signed an order in Council to give General Vance a salary raise to $306,000 a year. General Vance retired as CDS in January of this year, and these allegations have yet to be resolved. A replacement CDS was appointed and he's now facing allegations of sexual misconduct and has stepped aside from his position during the investigation. Further, Canadians have learned through numerous media reports that allegations of sexual assault and misconduct in the military have been ignored, investigations have been shut down, critical testimony and evidence has been lost, and charges have been dropped. Tragiquement, il ne s'agit pas des incidents isolés, mais du reflet d'un problème systématique qui est beaucoup plus dommageable. En 2015, un rapport cinglant de la juge des champs sur l'état de la culture misogène toxique au sein des forces armées canadiennes a été publié. Operation Honor, une opération militaire visant à éradiquer les agressions sexuelles, l'harcèlement et les inconduites dans les forces canadiennes, a été mise en place. Le général Vance s'est lui-même nommé comme le champion de cette opération. Le général Vance était responsable d'éliminer les comportements même pour lesquels il est maintenant accusé. Et en 2018, le ministre de la Défense était au courant, mais il n'a rien fait. Ce que nous menons à la motion d'aujourd'hui, c'est la raison pour laquelle il est si important d'entendre de l'ancienne chef du cabinet de ministre de la Défense, Zida Astravas. Nous devons savoir ce qu'elle a su, quand elle l'a su et quelles actions elle a prises. Aucun changement durable dans la culture militaire ne pourra avoir lieu si nous ne comprenons pas la pleine portée du problème et si nous ne savons pas exactement où les choses ont mal tourné. A military stands to defend the values of the nation, but it must also embody them. If the defense minister does not hold the military accountable to those values, including the ability for all members to serve equally with honor, free from sexual assault and discrimination, who will? And if the House of Commons committees can't do the work to hold cabinet ministers accountable, who else can? While this motion is about mandating that committees can hear from critical witnesses, it's about much more than that. It's about the fundamental values and foundations of our society. And when it comes to ensuring the conduct of the highest level of the Canadian Armed Forces, the defense minister says it's not up to him, and the Prime Minister, 
has said that it's not up to him. If it's not up to them, then who is responsible? If they won't act in the best interest of Canadians, who will? The ends can't justify the means. Every act at every step must be honourable and be carried out with integrity or the end itself is compromised. Democracy is fragile and it's only as strong as the trust and confidence that Canadians place in all of us, their elected official. That trust is hard fought and easily lost. I strongly urge all of my colleagues in the House to honour the trust that Canadians have placed in them, vote in favour of this motion and ensure that committees can hold the government to account and in doing so deliver a better Canada for all. Thank you.